So based on the stuff I saw, I think I'm going to uh, use this physics engine instead of using matter, JS, because of the some of the comments on the Pixie Discord. It seems like matter JS is not the best option. And the other thing that I realized, that I asked a bunch of questions, not a bunch of questions, I asked a question about the relationship between the view of the canvas and the physics engine. And I got some responses. And from the responses I got, it seems like that you have to implement a custom solution because when you change the view of the canvas and you zoom in and out, it's obviously gonna change the position of the objects on the canvas. And if you're using the physics physics engine, they kind of have to be synchronized because if the object gets smaller, the physics engine has to be aware. It has to update the position of the objects and the size of the objects. So it does the calculations correctly. So I think it's going to be very hard, but uh, it's the best way for, forward. So what I think I'm going to do now is just study this Rapier engine. It's, just, it's built on Rust, I think, and uses Wasm to... Uh, display on the browser or to handle the interactions in the browser. And uh, I'm thinking, I'm still not sure what, which direction I'm going to go. I'm thinking whether or not it's better to try to implement this physics engine inside of the Pixie viewport library. And then I can just modify the functions that I have there because I have the library locally installed. So or if it's better to, because I don't like the way that the Pixie viewport is designed uh, very much because they have like a more general design and they do the, I think it's more object oriented programming, which is just a bunch of classes inheriting from each other. And it seems very confusing to learn. So I think that it might be better to just try to implement everything on my own from scratch because then I have more, like I can remove all the stuff that is not necessary because it's more gen general stuff that uh, they have to put there. So, because there are several different applications and I can customize and optimize for the stuff that I'm trying to do. And also by doing that, I'm going to learn more as well. And I think that's probably gonna be necessary to learn all of this stuff because of the things that I want to do in the future, so. That's what I'm gonna do today. I'm just gonna study Rapier, and then I I think I'm gonna try to implement the my own stuff. But I'm gonna have to try to probably gonna step over the uh, things again so I can copy as much as possible from the functionality from Pixie viewports. I'm gonna see if I can understand what is happening when I zoom the canvas. Like how is it changing the view? because then I have the functions and then I can just copy the functions into my own stuff. I think probably the best way is to just try to do things instead of just studying as as well. So copy the functions and then just try to put, um, uh, try to implement right away instead of the engine co components. But first I'm gonna do this Italian thing here. It's been a long time since I haven't done this. And I still think I want to learn eventually how to speak Italian, so. Or at least like enough to understand what is going on, like when people are speaking in Italian, so. Because I think learning different languages helps you think in different ways as well. Because it's all connected, the concepts that the languages produce. It's kind of like programming languages as well. I think it's very similar the way that it works. When you have different languages, you're, you're encapsulating the same thing on different concepts, and then it changes the way you think about it. It, it is pretty much the same thing, actually. Fiso. Set, unchanging. Tre. Tre. Three. Desiderare. Desiderare. Desire. Aria. Aria. Air. Bene. Bene. Well. Anche. Anche. Also. Giocare. Giocare. Play. Piccolo. Piccolo. Small. Fine. Fine. End.
Mettere. Mettere. Put. Casa. Casa. Home. Leggere. Leggere. Read. Mano. Mano. Hand. Portare. Portare. Carry. Grande. Grande. Large. Compitare. Compitare. Spell. Words. Aggiungere. Aggiungere. Add. Anche. Anche. Even. Also. Terra. Terra. Land. Qui. Qui. Here. Devo. Devo. I must. Grande. Grande. Big. Alto. Alto. High. Tall. Tale. Tale. Such. Seguire. Seguire. Follow. Atto. Atto. An act. Perché? Perché? Why? Chiedere. Chiedere. Ask. Maschi. Maschi. Men. Cambiamento. Cambiamento. A change. È andato. È andato. He, she went. Luce. Luce. Light. Tipo. Tipo. Kind of thing. Spento. Spento. Turned off. Bisogno. Bisogno. Need. Casa. Casa. House. Immagine. Immagine. Image. Provare. Provare. Try. Noi. Noi. Us. Di nuovo. Di nuovo. Again. Animale. Animale. Animal. Punto. Punto. Point. Madre. Madre. Mother. Mondo. Mondo. World. Vicino. Vicino. Near. Costruire. Costruire. Build. Se stesso. Se stesso. Himself. Terra. Terra. Earth. Padre. Padre. Father. I think this is the comments uh, from the Pixie JS. There were some more comments as well and some other stuff about rapier on the not sure if that's how you say it, but on the other discords and it looks like it's better but like it's faster than the other engines but the downside is that it doesn't have there isn't a lot of content out there so it's gonna be harder to implement i think I think I'm just gonna read the documentation with the texture speech and then I'm gonna try to see if I can copy the, the functions. It's very confusing to understand what is going on here though, so like it's gonna be a challenge. Yeah, obviously the other thing that I can do is just try to implement from scratch. I have to understand. It's going to be difficult at the rate though. I, I don't like, uh, like, it feels to me that the way that the few parts it works or the way that the pixie class works makes it difficult, more difficult to understand. 
but it's hard to tell because I don't have like a good comparison with the other ones. I don't understand the other ones really well. I think it, it maybe it's just the nature of the thing, but it's I really dislike the way that the classes are and the the import statements. I also hate the the fact that when you click the F12, when you press F12 to go to the definition, it goes to the TypeScript definition because it doesn't help uh, very much. But it's not that big of a deal, I think. So I think yeah, the the viewport is probably the thing that is gonna handle the the event. I think I I looked into this function before when I was trying to solve the other problem. And these events are going to be assigned in one of these classes, I think is this input manager that in all the initialization, it adds everything here. It doesn't seem like it has the, it has the wheel, but not the move events or moved. So I think I'm just going to read the documentation first and then I'll go. See if I can understand what is going on. I think I'm going to read, I already read the documentation once from JavaScript. I'm going to re read the Rust documentation and then the JavaScript one again, because I read it really fast. I also watched a bunch of videos talking about the shaders and the uh, game programming. Thanks, sorry. Using the standard libraries from the traits by enabling one of the conversion cargo features in algebra. 
The Cover Glamo 1 3 features will enable conversion from slash to Glam 0.13. The Cover Glamo 1 4 features will enable conversion from slash to Glam 0.14. The Cover Glamo 1 5 features will enable conversion from slash to Glam 0.15. The same feature naming conversion will be used for the other supported version of Glam. Here are examples of conversions these features enable. Conversion between knock-on and back to 2 and Glam 0.2. Conversion between knock-on and back to 3 and Glam 0.3. Conversion between knock-on and back to 2 and Glam 0.3. Conversion between knock-on and back to 3 and Glam 0.3. Conversion between knock-on and back to 2 and 2. Glam. This page describes all the data structures needed for simulations illustrated by the basic simulation example. Gravity hash. Gravity is represented as a vector. It affects every dynamic rigid body taking part in the simulation. The gravity can be altered each time step by passing a different vector to the physics pipeline clone Learn more about the rigid body gravity modification in the dedicated section. Integration parameters hash. The integration parameters control various aspects of the physics simulation, including the time step length, number of solid iterations, number of CCD substeps, etc. The default integration parameters are set to achieve a good balance between performance and accuracy for games. They can be changed to make the simulation more accurate at the expense of their performance. Learn more about each integration parameter in the API docs. Island Manager hash. The island manager is responsible for tracking the set of dynamic rigid bodies that are still moving in these that are no longer moving, and can ignore by subsequent time steps to avoid useless computations. The island manager is automatically updated by physics pipeline clone step and can be queried to retrieve a list of all rigid bodies modified by the physics engine during the last time step. This can be used to update the rendering of only rigid bodies that move. Slash slash here on each dynamic rigid bodies that move out for rigid underscore handling island underscore man. The physics pipeline is responsible for tying everything together in order to run the physics simulation. It will take care of updating every data structure mentioned in this page, except the other pipelines. Running the force computation integration, and running CCD resolution. Usage of physics pipeline clone step is illustrated in the basic simulation example. It has two useful methods. Physics pipeline clone step executes one time step. This is the method you should use most of the time, unless you're trying to use your own containers instead of the predefined rigid body set and flyer set. Physics pipeline clone step underscore generic also executes one time step, but it's generic WRT. The rigid body and flyer containers. It is strongly discouraged to use this method unless you understand what is expected from your custom containers. More documentation on this topic will be added in the future. Our betting underscore rig you're playing for the betting engine is one example to use physics pipeline clone step underscore generic to use basically rigid bodies and flyer containers. Collision pipeline hash. The collision pipeline is similar to the physics pipeline except it will only run collision detection. It won't perform any dynamics, force computation, integration, CCD, etc. It is generally used instead of the physics pipeline when one only needs collision detection. Running both the collision pipeline and the physics pipeline is useless because the physics pipeline already does collision detection. Query pipeline hash. The query pipeline is responsible for efficient running scene queries. For example, ray casting, shake casting, sweep tests, intersection tests, on all the colliders of the scene. Before it is used, the query pipeline needs to be updated in order to take the new colliders positions into account. The query pipeline can be used alone, but it is very common to use the query pipeline alongside the collision pipeline or physics pipeline. Slash slash game loop out loop. Physics underscore pipeline. Learn more about scene queries with the query pipeline in the dedicated page. Rigid body set hash. The rigid body set contains all the rigid bodies that need to be simulated. This set is represented as a generational arena, i.e., a vector where each element is indexed using a handle that combines any 32 index and any 32 generation number. This ensures that every rigid body is given a unique handle. Learn more about rigid bodies in the dedicated page. Collider set hash. The collider set contains all the colliders that need to be simulated. This set is represented as a generational arena, i.e., a vector where each element is indexed using a handle that combines any 32 index and any 32 generation number. This ensures that every collider is given a unique handle. Learn more about colliders in the dedicated page. The impulse joint set contains all the impulse based joints that need to be simulated. This set is represented as a generational arena, i.e., a vector where each element is indexed using a handle that combines any 32 index and any 32 generation number. This ensures that every joint is given a unique handle. Learn more about joints in the dedicated page. CCD solver hash. The CCD solver is responsible for the resolution of continuous collision detection. By itself, this structure does not expose any feature useful. So it should simply be passed with physics pipeline clone set method. Learn more about CCD in the dedicated section. Learn more about physics solver hash. The physics solver is straight object implementing the physics solver. They can be used to apply arbitrary rules to ignore collision detection between some pairs of colliders. They can also be used to modify the contact process by the constraint solver for computing forces. Learn more about physics solver in the dedicated section. Event handler hash. The event handler is a straight object implementing the event handler trait. They can be used to get notified when two non-sensor colliders start slash stopping contacts, and when one sensor collider and one other collider start slash stopping second. Learn more about collision events in the dedicated section. Event handler hash. The event handler is a straight object implementing the event handler trait. They can be used to get notified when two non-sensor colliders start slash stopping contacts, and when one sensor collider and one other collider start slash stopping second. Learn more about collision events in the dedicated section. Rigid bodies. The real-time simulation of rigid bodies subjected to forces and contacts is the main feature of physics engine for video games, robotics, or animation. Rigid bodies are typically used to simulate the dynamics of non-formal solids as well as to trajectory of solids which velocities are controlled by the user, for example, moving platforms. On the other hand, rigid bodies are not enough to simulate, for example, cars, ragdolls, or robotic systems, as those use cases require adding restrictions on relative motion between their parts using joints. Note that rigid bodies are only responsible for the dynamics and kinematics of the solid. Colliders can be attached to a rigid body to specify a shape and enable collision detection. A rigid body without a collider attached to will not be affected by contacts because there is no shape to compute contact against. Creation and insertion hash. A rigid body is created by a rigid body builder structure that is based on the builder pattern. Then it needs to be inserted into the rigid body set that will be processed by the physics pipeline or query pipeline. The following example shows several setters that can be called customized rigid body being built. The input values are just random, so using this example, this will not lead to a useful result. Example 2D. Example 3D. Use radio 2D colon prelude. Slash slash the set will contain a rigid body dot let move rigid underscore body underscore set equals rigid body set colon new. Slash slash builder for a fixed rigid body dot let underscore equals rigid body builder colon fixed. Slash slash builder for a dynamic rigid body dot let underscore equals rigid body builder colon dynamic. Slash slash builder for a dynamic rigid body control the velocity level dot let underscore equals rigid body builder colon kinematic underscore velocity underscore base. Slash slash. All the properties are optional. The only calls that require rigid body builder colon new status. Rigid body builder colon fixed. Rigid body builder colon dynamic. Rigid body builder colon kinematic underscore velocity underscore base. Or rigid body builder colon kinematic underscore position underscore base. To initialize the builder and build to actually build a rigid body. Typically, the inertia and center of mass are automatically set to the inertia and center of mass resulting from the shapes of the colliders attached to the rigid body. But they can also be set manually. Rigid body type hash. There are three types of rigid bodies identified by rigid body type enumeration. Rigid body type colon dynamic indicates that the body is affected by external forces and contacts. Rigid body type colon fixed indicates the body cannot move. It acts as if it has infinite mass and will not be affected by any force. It will continue to collide with dynamic bodies, but not with fixed normal kinematic bodies. This is typically used for ground or temporary freezing body. Rigid body type colon kinematic position base indicates that the body position must not be altered by the physics engine. The user is free to set its next position and body velocity will be reduced each update according to ensure realistic behavior of dynamic bodies in contact with. This is typically used for moving platforms, elevators, etc. Rigid body type colon kinematic velocity base indicates that the body velocity must not be altered by the physics engine. The user is free to set its velocity and next body position will be reduced each update according to ensure realistic behavior of dynamic bodies in contact with. This is typically used for moving platforms, elevators, etc. Both position based and velocity based kinematic bodies are mostly the same. Choosing between both is mostly a matter of preference between position based control and velocity based control. The whole point of kinematic bodies is to let the user have full control of their trajectory. This means that kinematic bodies will simply ignore any contact force and go through walls and ground. In other words, if you tell kinematic to go somewhere, it will go there. No questions asked. Taking obstacles into account needs to be done manually either by using scene queries to detect nearby obstacles or by using the built-in character controller. Position hash. The position of a rigid body represents its location, translation in 2D or 3D world space, as well as its orientation, rotation. A translational part is represented as a vector, and its rotational part is a unit quaternion in 3D or a unit plus number in 2D. Both are combined into an isometry. The position of a rigid body can be set when created. It can also be set after its creation as illustrated in the warning. I'm gonna create uh, another branch to change stuff, and I'm gonna remove the matter JS stuff. I think I'm already on a different branch. Uh, I don't want to push the changes because that's going to break the, the version that has, that is live. So
I'm probably gonna have to use this use stick because this is from Pixie. So I think I'm gonna leave it there. And I think it's used used to. I'm not really sure what delta means. It's obviously used to keep track of the frames in the animation, I think. So each request animation frame is going to be one tick, maybe. And the delta is the difference. But I don't understand really well how this what, what this is supposed to do. I think I'm going to leave it here. Oh, this is the other thing. They use engine. Because it's here. But I guess I, I can keep the, the same engine thing here. And then I just change the, the value there. So I think I'm going to leave it like that. So I don't have to redo it. So maybe I just put no here. Maybe it's better to just comment this stuff out and then I... Because it's probably going to be really similar with the other physics engine, so... This stuff I'm gonna remove. It's probably gonna be different. The fuck? The, the most difficult part is try is thinking about what is the best way to to like organize things if i should put like i think it's probably better to separate them um but maybe i, I created a different folder and then i just copy this stuff from but the, the thing is like what structure should i use and that's the problem i, I think i, I should probably make them part of the same thing, I think. Like the physics engine and the change of the view. Uh, I'm not really sure if I should put on a class or try to make fun uh, make uh, based on functions. And th that stuff is going to be difficult to figure out. So I was thinking about that. I should probably put something like... Uh, make it based on something that is gonna be on the screen already is so i don't have to uh, click the the button there to make the api call and receive the nodes so i can render or maybe do something completely different just so i can like play around and see if i can uh, render stuff on the screen first i think that's a better idea but I have to integrate with the stuff that i have here already so It's going to be kind of annoying.
I mean, maybe I should also make. Uh, I think it's probably gonna have to be a class. And then inside of the class, I put the physics engine, the view, and uh, I put something to keep track of the nodes as well. That way, I don't need to. Like, you can just add a node to the class, and I handle that when I initialize the the class, which is gonna be. I think I'm gonna do it inside of the world instead of using a custom pixel component. Because I think using the custom component it just increases the complexity. So the only reason why I did like this is because of the example that I have there. I think it's probably the best way to go about it is just create another folder. Then inside it but then I have to think about it. Um, like what is the best way to go about it? Because I think you should create another folder and then incorporate the stuff. I, th I think I'm just going to start like with one file, one class, and then as I build things, then I'm going to see like how to scale. I think that's probably the best way to go about it. So I just copy this stuff from Pixie view part to change the view of the canvas. And then I change this one, this file here, so I can render something on the screen instead of rendering the, the graphs. I have to see though. Maybe I just do the graphs, but then I, I do the nodes, but I do them like uh, instead of using the API, I have to remember what I did to add the data. I'm using the contacts. This is something I was thinking about that I should probably change as well. So, and that's the, the challenging part because I have to think about it. Like the, the reason why I don't want to put the graph, the, yeah, the data for the graph the, fu the functionality to, to build the graph inside of the other classes as well is because I think that as I scale this stuff and I try to do a bunch of different visualizations, then there are going to be several different types of graphs, I think, for each kind of a thing. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to me to put the graph inside of the physics engine and the viewport library. It makes more sense to separate them. But then it becomes this issue with the state. Like, how do I update the state with the graph, with the data, without using the context? Because then the context is going to make it so that every graph renders. And I was thinking about it that I'm probably going to have like several different graphs at the same time on the application. So it's probably not a good idea to use the context. I think the best way would be if I figure out a way to use the also I'm not using this graph anymore just realize that this is another thing that I, I thought about like I changed this before because before I, I was wrapping these with a div outside of these uh, elements here to determine the size because then I can control the container is much easier to control it with the width and height here because I can't put width and height directly here so but then I remember that I changed to this one because I thought it made more sense but then I realized that I forgot something that the reason why I did the other way there, like there was a reason in the first place even though it looks kind of weird but let me think so maybe I should change this instead of being a forward, forward graph. I just make a normal component. Then remove this stuff here. And then I change this, choose uh, state. And this is the stuff that made me use contacts in the first place. Uh, I think because I tried to pass the props and then it wasn't working for some reason. It wasn't updating, so maybe I should try to do that again as well. But the thing is, like, what thing should I do first? Because when I click there, it's going to change. I'm going to have to go back as well to remember. And this stuff never changes.
I, I, because the thing so I think what I can do is just use a state here like use a fact and then use states and do the same thing that I'm doing on the other one but then I just make it based on the I just set the notes here and then instead of using the context I use the nodes that I use here just for now yes. what, what I want to do is just have some nodes and I just always instead of having to click the button the way that, that it is now to load everything or like I think that I should probably like start from the beginning like forget about the stuff of the creating the graphs and everything else and just uh, like tr try to play around with making visual visualizations on the canvas doing creating the stuff from scratch and that's gonna help me understand how like everything is connected how the calculations work so i think that's what I, I have to do now so I, th I think i have to remember just the formats and go to the other file The question is, what is the least amount of work that I can do now to just get to the point where I can start building this stuff? I think I'm going to have to leave it. Uh, maybe I'll leave it like this for now, and then I step through. Because I'm going to have to understand more how the functions work, the wheel events. And maybe that's a waste of time as well. And the problem is I'm going to have to remove this stuff here. And this is another question is whether or not this, it doesn't feel like to me that this would be the best approach. I think I'll also I'm just using like this now because it's the, from the examples on MetaJS, but like you create these four different shapes to work as boundaries. And I kind of don't like that because it, it feels like it feels like a hacky solution. Like you have to have four diff different invisible shapes surrounding the stuff that you want to do. I d really don't like that. I, th I think it would be a lot better if like there's no boundaries, obviously, because there's a lot of a lot more freedom then in the graph, the size of everything. But I don't really know like what the standard is. So I, I think I'm gonna remove this stuff here. Obviously, I'm kind of concerned with removing things because then I might lose it. So <laughs> and I don't want to rethink about all of this stuff again. I think I'm going to remove and then I'm going to commit and see if the other branch still has the, the stuff. So I believe that the best way to do things is to try to keep it as simple as possible because the complexity is going to be a byproduct anyway, like the, the more things you're trying to do. So if you make more complex than necessary, then it's just going to be a bunch of bullshit. Like in the, as you scale more and more, it just adds up all the stuff. So I believe that I should try to do it like as simple as, as I possibly can in the beginning. And then the complexity is going to be, is going to increase anyway, the more stuff that I'm trying to do. So this is the reason why I think I shouldn't use the PC component. I'm also thinking about like, if it is something that I build and then later on I want to hire people to work on, then it's better to keep it as simple as possible so that the person that is going to come, they understand like everything and then they'll have to think about all of this, how this works. Let me just commit. Mm. 
and it looks like still has all all this stuff nice there there was some thing that I was doing in the past that it wasn't updating, but I think it was just because I forgot to commit on the other branch. So it's kind of concerned that if I delete everything there, the other branch is not going to be the same. So I think you can delete this stuff as well. So probably I'm gonna keep it like this, and then I'm just gonna. It's easier than think about it, uh, thinking about this, changing all this stuff now because there's too much stuff to focus on. I, I think the the biggest priority is just to make the visual to learn how the visualization works. I want to understand the calculations. So I understand some of the theory now, but the GPU only draws triangles. And then the positions are the fragments and the color of the triangles are the shaders. And that's the WebGL language. I think it's JS, LS or something like that. And then you specify through this program how the GPU is gonna draw all these triangles. And then through that, it renders the visualization. And then you have the field of view, you have the renderer, the view, the, the renderer is the thing that manipulates the view, I think. The view is the matrix calculations that determine what's going to happen on the screen and then you have the elements inside of the views and pixie works with the classes where if you put the stuff there it's going to be, depend on what you put here here i have the graphics which is a pixie component uh, a pixie element which is going to be just a container i think and then Every time you change something in the view, like there's the positions that are the positions of the elements, the positions of the view, and the relationship between them. And then every time you change something, there's a bunch of calculations that happens. And this is why it gets very complicated to understand. Also have to understand the app class as well. And it's kind of hard because of this auto detect renderer. So I think the best way is probably just step through more times to understand first how it works with the view parts. Then after I do that, then and the question is, how do I put the the break? I, I think I remember that I can put the breakpoints on event listeners on the developer tools, but it's not very uh, specific. So I have to figure that out. Maybe ask ChatGPT about it, because I want to know exactly what functions are running when the events are triggered and how they're changing, how they're doing the calculations to change the view on the app. And once I know that, then I can uh, do my own thing. And I think I'm just gonna create an, another folder. What can I name? I, I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna name view or something related and then put physics inside of the, the folder. I just keep it simple. So I think I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna try to start with, with as few files as possible. So I just create a few, uh, one file and then I, f if I was gonna do functions how would I do that? And that's the question. I think it has to be a class because viewport uses the event emitter class. So it extends the event emitter. But I can also import the event emitter and then just use it inside of the functions as well. Not sure if that's a good idea though. And the question is how to make it as simple as possible.
Ah, uh, maybe I should just step through. I think I'm gonna finish reading the documentation, then I'm just gonna step through this time. Yeah, it's probably better to understand how the how pixie viewport changes first. It's gonna be a lot easier, I think. But yeah, I'm thinking: is it is there a way that is easier than pixie viewport to do this stuff? Maybe maybe they did it the way they did because it's the only way. But it's, it's, it feels like the intuitive feeling that I get is that it feels that is more complicated than it should be. But I think that a big reason for that is just because the, the nature of the library itself, like when you create a library like this, you have to handle for a bunch of different uh, use cases. So I think like the plugin manager is the a great, like, uh, I'm not sure if the example is the right word, but like the whole, whole reason for ha whole reason for having this is because they want to give you the option of what events you're going to put and then because of that it has to be more gener generic and then i think it makes things more complicated because you have to put all of these different classes that are going to handle all of this stuff depending what thing you're trying to do but for my my situation i think that it would be better to just remove all of this complexity and just focus like on the actual stuff that I want to do and then grow from there because I think that's for what I'm trying to do is probably better to have like very customized thing anyway based on the stuff that I think I will want to do in the future like I would have I want to have I want to have more flexibility and control over uh, what happens in the visualization because th that way I have more freedom to think about different things that I can do. And it's probably going to remove the complexity. Yeah, so let me continue to read the stuff then I will step through this. Directly changing the position of rigid body is equivalent to teleporting. This is not a physically realistic action. Teleporting dynamic or kinematic bodies may result in non-behaviors, especially if the teleporting was based on the objects. For dynamic bodies, forces, impulses, or velocity modification should be preferred. For kinematic bodies, see the discussion after the examples below. Example 2D. Example 3D. Slash that position where the rigid body is created. Slash that rigid underscore body equals rigid body builder colon dynamic slash slash the rigid body translation. Slash. In order to move dynamic rigid body, is strongly discouraged to set position directly as may result in weird behaviors. It is that the rigid body teleports itself, which is a non-physical behavior. For dynamic bodies, is recommended to either set velocity or apply forces or impulses. For velocity based kinematic bodies, is recommended to set velocity instead of setting position directly. For position based kinematic bodies, is recommended to use the special methods. Rigid body colon center score next underscore kinematic underscore position. Rigid body colon center score next underscore kinematic underscore rotation. Rigid body colon center score next underscore kinematic underscore translation. These methods will let the physics pipeline compute the fictitious velocity of position based kinematic body for more realistic actions with other rigid bodies. These methods will immediately modify the position of the kinematic body itself. The position of the kinematic body will be automatically set to these values during the next physics pipeline update. The velocity of dynamic rigid body controls how fast it's moving in time. The velocity is applied to the center of mass of rigid body and is composed of two independent parts. The linear velocity specifies a vector representing the direction of magnitude of movement. In 3D, the angular velocity is given as a vector representing the rotation axis multiplied by the rotation angular speed and mass slash s. Axis angular representation. In 2D, the angular velocity is given as a real representing the angular speed and mass slash s. The velocity is only relevant to dynamic rigid bodies. It is not effective on fixed rigid bodies, and the velocity of kinematic rigid bodies are automatically computed each time based on the next kinematic positions. The velocity of rigid bodies is automatically updated by the physics pipeline for taking forces, contacts, and joints into account. It can be set when rigid body is created or after its creation. Example 2D. Alternatively, the velocity of dynamic rigid body can be altered directly by applying force or impulse. Gravity hash. Gravity is such a common force that is implemented as a special case, even if it could easily be implemented by the user using force application. The gravity is given as an argument to the physics pipeline colon step method and can be modified by simply modifying the argument. No, however, the change of gravity won't automatically wake up the sleeping body, so keep in mind you may want to wake up manually before gravity change. Because fixed and kinetic bodies are immune to forces, they are not affected by gravity. Info. A rigid body with no mass will not be affected by gravity either. So if your rigid body doesn't fall, you expect it to. Make sure it has a mass explicitly, or at least one collider with non-zero density attached to it. It is possible to change the way gravity affects a specific rigid body by setting the rigid body's gravity scale to a value other than 1.0. The magnitude of the gravity applied to this body will be multiplied by the scaling factor. Therefore, a gravity scale set to 0.0 will single gravity for the rigid body, whereas a gravity scale set to 2.0 will make it twice strong. A negative value will flip the direction of gravity for this rigid body. This gravity scale factor can be set when the rigid body is created or after its creation. Slash that the gravity scale when the rigid body Forces and impulses attach. In addition to gravity, it is possible to add custom forces or torques or apply impulses or torque impulses to dynamic rigid bodies in order to make them move in specific ways. Forces affect rigid body acceleration, whereas impulses affect rigid body velocity. They are both based on familiar equations. Forces, the acceleration changes equal to the force divided by the mass. Delta A equals m. One f. Impulses, the velocity changes equal to the impulse divided by the mass. Delta B equals m. One i. Forces can be added, and impulses can be applied to a rigid body after it has been created. Added forces are persistent across simulation steps and can be created manually. Example 3D. Let rigid underscore body equals rigid underscore body underscore set. Dot underscore move rigid underscore body underscore handle. Unwrap. Slash slash the true argument. Make sure the rigid body. Keep in mind that dynamic rigid body with zero mass won't be affected by linear force slash impulse, and a rigid body with zero angular inertia won't be affected by torque slash torque impulses. So if your force doesn't appear to do anything, make sure that the rigid body is dynamic. It is strong enough to make a rigid body move. Try a very large value and see if it does something. The rigid body has non-zero mass or angular inertia either because they were set explicitly, or because they were computed automatically from colliders with non-zero densities. The rigid body is weight by waking up manually or setting the last weight underscore parameter true. Mass properties hash. The mass properties of a rigid body is composed of three parts. The mass which determines the resistance of the rigid body WRT. Linear movements. A high mass implies that larger forces are needed to make the rigid body translate. The angular inertia determines the resistance of the rigid body WRT. The angular movements. A high angular inertia implies that larger forces are needed to make the rigid body rotate. The center of mass determines relative to what points forces are applied to the rigid body. Zero is a special value for mass and angular inertia. A mass equal to zero is interpreted as infinite mass. An angular inertia equal to zero is interpreted as infinite angular inertia. Therefore, a rigid body with a mass equal to zero will not be affected by any force, and a rigid body with an angular inertia equal to zero will not be affected by any torque. Computing the mass and angular inertia can often be difficult because they depend on the geometric shape of the object.
contract being simulated. This is why they are automatically computed by radio when the attached to the rigid body. The collider has its own mass and angular inertia contribution. Computed based on the collider's shape and density. The rigid body is attached to. Leverage underscore body equals rigid body over cone dynamic. Alternatively, it is possible to set the mass properties of a rigid body when it's created. Keep in mind this won't prevent the collider's contributions to be added to these values. So make sure to set the attached collider's density to zero if you want your explicit values to be the final mass properties values. Example 2D. Example 3D. Slash set the mass properties when a rigid body is created. Slash leverage underscore body equals rigid body over cone dynamic. Additional underscore mass 0.5. Not additional underscore principal underscore angular underscore. Locking translation slash rotation hash. It is sometimes useful to prevent a rigid body from rotating or translating. One typical use case for locking rotations is to prevent player model as a dynamic rigid body from tilting. These kind of degree of freedom restrictions can be achieved by joints, but locking translation slash rotation is a single rigid body WRT. The Cartesian coordinate axes can be done in a much more efficient and numerically stable way. That's why rigid bodies have dedicated methods for this. Example 3D. Damping hash. Damping lets you slow down a rigid body automatically. This can be used to achieve a wide variety of effects like fake air friction. Each rigid body is given a linear damping coefficient, affecting its linear velocity, and an angular damping coefficient, affecting its angular velocity. Larger values of the damping coefficients lead to a stronger slowdowns. Their default values are 0.0. .0. No damping at all. This damping coefficient can be set when the rigid body is created or after its creation. Slash set the damping coefficients when the rigid body is created. Slash Dominance is non realistic, but sometimes useful. Feature. It can be used to make one rigid body unit of forces originating from contacts with some other bodies. For example, this can be used to model a player represented as a dynamic rigid body that cannot be pushed back by any or some other dynamic rigid bodies part of the environment. Each rigid body is part of dominance group N minus 127. 127. The default group is zero. If the colliders from two rigid bodies are in contact, the one with the highest dominance will act as if it has infinite mass, making a unit of contact forces the other body will apply on it. If both bodies are part of the same dominance group, then their contacts will work in the usual way. Both are affected by opposite forces with the same magnitude. For example, if a dynamic body A is in dominance group 10 and a dynamic body B in dominance group minus 20, their contact between the collider attached to A and the collider attached to B will result in a remaining mobile being pushed by A, independently from the mass. Info. A non dynamic rigid body is always considered as being part of dominance group greater than any dynamic rigid body. This means that dynamic slash fixed and dynamic slash kinematic contacts will continue to work normally, independently from the dominance group they were given by the user. The dominance group can be set when the rigid body is created or after its creation. Slash set the dominance. Continuous collision detection hash. Continuous collision detection (CCD) is used to make sure that fast-moving objects don't miss any contacts. A problem usually called tunneling. This is done by using motion clamping, i.e., each fast-moving rigid body with CCD enabled to be stopped at the time when the first contact happened, taking their continuous motion into account. This will result in some time loss for that rigid body. This loss of time can be reduced by increasing the maximum number of CCD subjects executed. The default being one. In the integration parameters, by changing the integration parameters, colon max underscore CCD underscore subjects radio contacts colon integration underscore parameters colon max underscore CCD radio implements nonlinear CCD, meaning that it takes into account both the angular and translational motion of the rigid body. CCD takes action only if the CCD enabled rigid body is moving fast relative to another rigid body. Therefore, it is useless to enable CCD on fixed rigid bodies and rigid bodies that are expected to move slowly. By default, CCD is disabled for all rigid bodies because it requires additional computations. It can be enabled when creating a rigid body or after its creation. Slash enable CCD when sleeping hash. When a dynamic rigid body doesn't move or moves very slowly during a few seconds, it will be marked as sleeping by the physics pipeline. Rigid bodies marked as sleeping are no longer simulated by the physics engine until they are woken up. That way, the physics engine doesn't waste any computational resources simulating objects that don't actually move. They are woken up automatically whenever another non-sleeping rigid body starts interacting with them, either with a joint or with one of its attached liars generating contacts. However, a sleeping rigid body won't respond to any user action. This is why it is possible to wake up a rigid body manually with a rigid body colon wake underscore. Some rigid body methods take additional wake underscore blue argument that, if true, ensures that the rigid body wakes up before the action takes place. For example, rigid body colon add underscore force force. True, will wake up the rigid body before adding force. Impulse joint set colon remove. True, will wake up the two rigid bodies attached by remove joints. Collider set colon remove. True, will wake up the rigid body remove liars attached to. Unless you want to achieve special effects, it is recommended to always set the wake underscore argument to true. One example case where setting the argument wake underscore false makes sense is similar to the concept of gravity with rigid body colon add underscore force force. False. This will result in the force being added to the rigid body, but will allow the rigid body to fall asleep if it reaches a dynamic equilibrium. Each rigid body can be given a user defined data type to 1.8. This integer can have a value that is never used slash modified by the physics engine. This can, for example, be useful to add some custom data for custom contact filtering slash modification. This user data can be set when the rigid body is created. Colliders. Colliders represent the geometric shapes that generate contacts and collision events when they touch. Attaching one or multiple colliders to a rigid body allows the rigid body to be affected by contact forces. Creation and insertion hash. A collider is created by a collider builder structure that is based on a builder pattern. Then it needs to be inserted into the collider set that will be processed by the physics pipeline, collision pipeline, or query pipeline. The following examples show several setters that can be called the customized collider being built. The input values are just random, so using this example this will not lead to a useful result. Example 2D. Example 3D. Use radio 2D colon prelude. Use SD colon F32 colon cons colon pi. Slash slash set will contain a collider dot move collider underscore set equals collider set colon new. Slash slash builder for ball shape collider dot underscore equals collider builder colon ball 0.5. Slash slash builder for keyboard shape collider dot underscore equals collider builder colon keyboard 0.5. 0.2. Collider type hash. There are two types of colliders. Collider type colon solid. Solid colliders represent the geometric shape and contact points with other colliders to generate contact forces to prevent objects from penetrating each other. Collider type colon sensor. Sensor colliders on the other end don't generate contacts. They only generate intersection events when one sensor collider and another collider starts touching. Sensor colliders are generally used to detect when something enters an area. By default, the collider is a solid collider. This can be changed to a sensor when constructing a collider or after construction. Slash that collider type when the collider is created. Slash that. Overview hash. The main characteristic of a collider is its geometric shape. The supported shapes are illustrated below. Shapes only hold information about their geometry. Their world space position is given by the collider's position. Balls, cuboids, capsules, cylinders, and cones are all described by their half height and radius. Compound shapes, convex meshes, triangle meshes, high fields, and polygons are more complicated shapes described in the paragraphs. Convex meshes hash. A convex mesh is a shape such that if two points are part of the shape, then the segment between these two points is also part of the shape. There are two ways of creating a collider with a convex shape. Using collider builder colon convex underscore points. This is the simplest approach. It will automatically compute the convex hull of the given set of points. A convex is the smallest convex shape that contains all given points. Using collider builder colon convex underscore mesh points indices. In 3D, a collider builder colon convex underscore hulling points in 2D. This takes a mesh described by its vertex buffer and index buffer and assumes it's already convex. You need to ensure that it's convex yourself. This will be more efficient than the collider builder colon convex underscore hull constructor because it won't perform any calculations to ensure convexity. However, if the input mesh is actually convex, the collision detection for that shape will give an incorrect result. Triangle meshes and polygons hash. Triangle meshes in 3D and polygons in 2D can be used to describe the boundary of any kind of shape. This is generally useful to describe the fixed environment in games, terrains, buildings, etc. Triangle meshes and polygons are defined by the vertex buffer and index buffer. The winding of the triangles and triangle meshes does not matter. Its topology doesn't matter either. It can have holes, cavities, doesn't need to be closed or manifold. It is however strongly recommended to avoid triangles that are long and thin because they can result in a lower numerical stability of collision detection. A triangle mesh slash polygon is composed of triangle slash segments with no thickness. This means that geometric queries like point containment tests won't work intuitively because the triangle mesh is assumed to have no interior. A triangle mesh can be built with collider builder colon triangle vertices. Indices, where vertices is the buffer containing all the vertices of the mesh, and indices is a set of indices indicating what vertex is used by what triangle. The vertex buffer and index buffer may have different lengths, and any vertex can be shared by multiple triangles. A polygon collider can be built with collider builder colon polygon vertices. Indices, where vertices is the buffer containing all the vertices of polygon, and indices is an optional set of indices indicating what vertex is used by what segment. The vertex buffer and index buffer may have different lengths, and any vertex can be shared by multiple segments. If the given vertex buffer is none, then the input vertices are assumed to form a line script, i.e., the polygon is formed from segments vertices 0, vertices 1, vertices 1, vertices 2, etc. Warning: It is discouraged to use triangle meshes or polygons for colliders attached to dynamic rigid bodies because they have no interior. It is easy for another object to get stuck in them. In order to simulate properly non-convex objects, it is rec
I'll be right back. Indicates the size of the rectangle of the FC plane. A high field collider can be given any orientation by changing the orientation of the collider itself. A 2D high field is a large segment along the x axis, subdivided by regular angles. Each vertex of the subdivision is given a height, i.e., the coordinate of that point along the y axis. A 2D high field collider can be created with a collider called high field height. Scale, where height is a vector indicating the altitude of each subdivision point of the high field. The number of elements on that vector is the number of subdivisions of the high field. The scale argument indicates the length of the subdivided segment along the x axis. Compound shape hash. It is not recommended to use a triangle mesh or polyline for the shape of the collider attached to a dynamic rigid body. The alternative is to use a compound shape to model a non-convex object as a unit of multiple convex parts, which can be cuboids, balls, convex meshes, etc. This is commonly known as a convex decomposition. An alternative to using a compound shape is to attach multiple colliders to the same rigid body. All the colliders will move the rigid body automatically, behaving in a very similar way than using a single collider with a compound shape. The main difference between the two approaches is about collision events. Each collider generates individual collision starts slash stop events. To build a compound shape, it is possible to replicate a set of shapes as well as the position of the compound shape's local space. Collider builder colon compound back. Plus one, shape one, plus two, shape two copy. It is also possible to build a compound shape model in a convex decomposition of a 3D triangle mesh or 2D poly using the collider builder colon convex underscore decomposition vertices. Indices. Method. This will automatically create a compound shape composed of multiple convex meshes obtained from the approximate convex decomposition of the triangle mesh or poly in 2D using the algorithm. Here are examples of a 2D concave polygon decomposed into two convex parts as well as a 3D mesh with approximate convex decomposition composed of seven convex parts. Round shapes hash. Some shapes are round variants. Round cuboid. Round cylinder. Round cone. Round convex polygon and round convex polyhedron. These are shapes which are a small thickness with round border. For algorithmic reasons, collision detection involving round cylinders. Round cones. Round convex polygon or round convex polyhedron will be faster than collision detection with their non-round However, collision detection with round cuboids will be slower than collision detection with regular cuboids. Colliders with round shapes are built in a way very similar to their non-round For example, collider builder colon round underscore cuboid. These constructors take one additional parameter. The size of the added thickness called border underscore radius. Mass properties hash. The mass properties of a rigid body is computed as the sum of the mass properties manually set by the user of the rigid body. Plus, the mass properties of the colliders attached to it. There are two ways to define the mass properties of the collider. The easiest, automatic way by giving the collider a non-zero density. The default density is one point zero or non-zero mass. This will ensure the other mass properties like the angular inertia tensor are computed automatically from the collider shape. The manual way by giving explicit mass angular inertia to the collider is recommended to use the density-based or mass-based approaches that will ensure the automatically computed mass properties are coherent with the geometric shape. Wrong mass properties, especially angular inertia part and center of mass location, may lead to odd behaviors. The manual approach is usually useful when modeling real-world objects for which you already know the real-world mass, center of mass, and angular inertia tensor. The mass properties of the collider can only be set when the collider is created. Example 3D, let rigid underscore body equals rigid body builder colon dynamic. Build, let rigid underscore body underscore handle equals rigid underscore position hash. The position of the collider represents its location, translation, in 2D or 3D world space as well as its orientation, rotation. A translation part is represented as a vector and rotation part is a unit quaternion, in 3D, or a unit complex number, in 2D. Both are combined into an isometry. Warning, please read carefully the paragraph after the next example. It explains how the collider position and the action of setting this position behaves differently when it's attached to a rigid body. It is possible to set this position when the collider is created or after its creation. Example 2D, slash set the collider position when the collider is created. Slash the collider if the collider is attached to a rigid body, its position is automatically updated by the physics pipeline when a rigid body moves by the physics pipeline. If a change to the rigid body position is made by the user, then the collider position will be updated during the next time step. Therefore, directly setting the position of the collider attached to a rigid body will have no lasting effect. Instead, it is possible to set the position of the collider relative to the rigid body as attached to. Example 2D. Example 3D. Let rigid underscore body equals rigid body builder colon dynamic. Built. Let rigid underscore body underscore handle equals rigid. Friction is a force that opposes the relative tangential motion between two rigid bodies with colliders in contact. This force has a direction of orthogonal to the contact normal and opposite to the relative rigid body motion at contact point. Following the Coulomb friction model, the maximum magnitude of this force is the magnitude of the force along contact normal multiplied by friction coefficient. A friction coefficient of zero implies no friction at all. Completely sliding contact. And a coefficient greater or equal to one implies very strong friction. Values greater than one are allowed. Note: radius does not make any distinction between the fixed and dynamic friction coefficients. Each collider has its own friction coefficient. This means that when two colliders are in contact, we need to apply a rule that combines the friction coefficients of these two colliders into a single coefficient that we use for contact. This rule is described by the coefficient combined rule of Coefficient combined rule of average. The average of the two coefficients is used for contact. Coefficient combined rule of min. The minimum of the two coefficients is used for contact. Coefficient combined rule of multiply. The product of the two coefficients is used for contact. Coefficient combined rule of max. The maximum of the two coefficients is used for contact. By default, the average rule is used. Each collider can be given its own friction combined rule. When two colliders are in contact, we need to select one of the combined rule. The following presence is used. Max greater than multiply greater than min greater than average. For example, if one collider with a multiple friction combined rule is in contact with a collider with the average friction combined rule, then the multiple rule will be applied to the friction coefficient of this contact. I.e., the coefficient of both colliders will be multiplied to obtain the coefficient used by contact. The coefficient combined rule system exists to cover a wide variety of use cases efficiently. If this is not flexible enough, it is possible to get full control of the selection of friction coefficients for each contact point using contact modification. For example, contact modification allows the simulation of colliders with non-uniform friction coefficients. The friction coefficient of friction combined rule can both be set when colliders create or after creation. Slash set the friction coefficient of friction combined rule when colliders create. Restitution controls how elastic, aka bouncy, a contact is. The elasticity of a contact is controlled by restitution coefficient. A restitution coefficient set to one fully elastic contact implies that the exit velocity of the contact has the same magnitude as the entry velocity along the contact normal. It is if you drop a bouncing ball and it gets back to the same height as the bounce. A restitution coefficient set zero implies that the exit velocity of the contact will be zero along the contact normal. It is if you drop a ball but it doesn't bounce ball. The friction and restitution coefficients are both managed in very similar ways. With the coefficient combined rule or contact modification, the paragraph below is almost identical to the paragraph of friction. Each collider has its own restitution coefficient. This means that when two colliders are in contact, we need to apply a rule that combines the restitution coefficients of these two colliders into a single coefficient that will be used for contact. This rule is described by coefficient combined rule of noon. Coefficient combined rule of average. The average of the two coefficients is used for contact. Coefficient combined rule of min. The minimum of the two coefficients is used for contact. Coefficient combined rule of multiply. The product of the two coefficients is used for contact. Coefficient combined rule of max. The maximum of the two coefficients is used for contact. By default, the average rule is used. Each collider can be given its own restitution combined rule. When two collider 
combined rule. The following precedent is used. Max greater than multiply greater than min greater than average. For example, if one collider with multiple resolution combined rule is in contact with a collider with the average resolution combined rule, then the multiple rule will be applied for the resolution coefficient of this contact. I.e. the coefficient of both colliders will be multiplied to obtain the coefficient used by contact. The coefficient combined rule system exists to cover a wide variety of use cases efficiently. If this is not flexible enough, it is possible to get full control of the selection of resolution coefficients for each contact point using contact modification. For example, contact modification allows the simulation of colliders with non-uniform resolution coefficients. The resolution coefficient and resolution combined rule can both be set when colliders create or after creation. Slash the resolution coefficient. Collision groups and solver groups hash. The most efficient way of preventing some pairs of colliders from interacting with each other is to use collision groups or solver groups. Each collider is given. A collision underscore group for filtering what pair of colliders should have a contact or intersection test at least one of the colliders is a sensor. Computed by the narrow face. This filtering happens right after the broad face. At the beginning of the narrow face, a solver underscore group for filtering what pair of colliders should have a contact force is computed. This filtering happens at the end of the narrow face before the constraint solver. In other words, the solver underscore groups is here to prevent contact forces from being computed between some colliders, whereas the collision underscore groups will also prevent contact themselves and contact events from being computed. The collision underscore groups should be preferred most of the time because it skips more computations. The solver underscore groups is only useful if you really want the contact information to be computed, but not the forces. For example, so you can apply your own forces based on these contacts. A collision group or solver group is described as a pair of bit masks. The group's membership indicates what groups the colliders part of. One bit per group. The group's filtering indicates what groups the colliders interact with. One bit per group. Because the membership filtered bit masks are 32 groups. I default all bits are set to one. The colliders part of every group and interact with every group. For example, let's say we want a collider to be part of groups zero, two, three, and be able to interact with groups two. Then its group membership is zero b eleven zero one. Its group filter is zero b one zero zero. The collision groups and solver groups of the collider can be set during or after creation. Slash the collision groups and solver groups when the collider is created. After the broad phase detects the two colliders A and B may start being in contact. The narrow phase will check the collision groups of both colliders to see if it needs to compute contacts. The check operates as follows: If the collider A is not member of any collision group, then filter B. Then no contact is computed. If the collider B is not member of any collision group, then filter A. Then no contact is computed. The exact bitwise check is the following: A dot collision underscore groups. Membership B dot collision underscore groups. Filter. If this test succeeds, then the narrow phase will compute contacts. Then it will check the solver groups of both colliders using the same kind of test as described before, but using the solver underscore groups instead of collision underscore groups. If the test succeeds, then the constraint solver will compute forces for each contacts. Otherwise, it won't. Active collision types hash. By default, collision detection is completely disabled between two colliders when both are attached to non-dynamic bodies. Sometimes it can be useful to enable collision detection between, for example, a collider attached to a dynamic rigid body and a collider attached to a fixed rigid body. This can be done by modifying the collider's active collision types. Slash the active collision types when the collider is created. Slash the collider equals collider builder colon ball zero point five. Active underscore collision underscore types active collision types colon default. Active collision types colon underscore fixed. Build copy. Slash the active collision types after the collider creation. Equals collider underscore set dot underscore move collider underscore handle unwrap collider dot set underscore active underscore collision underscore types active collision types colon default active collision types colon kinematic to enable collision detection between kinematic bodies and fixed bodies as well as dynamic bodies set active collision types to active collision types colon default active collision types colon kinematic underscore fixed copy the event handlers are used to find callbacks used to be notified when two colliders start slash stop touching by default no collision event is generated by the narrow face in order to enable collision event for a pair of colliders at least one of the involved colliders must have the corresponding events as active an event is activated for a collider by setting its corresponding active events bit to one setting the active events colon collision underscore events bit to one enables the collision events involving the collider the active events of the collider can be set when the collider is created or after creation slash the active events when the collider is created. Physics hooks are used to find callbacks used to filter out some contact pairs or modify contacts based on arbitrary user code. In order to enable a physics hook for a pair of colliders, at least one of the involved colliders must have the corresponding hooks as active. A hook is activated for a collider by setting its corresponding active hooks bit to one. Setting the active hooks colon filter underscore contact underscore pair bit to one enables manual filtering all the contact pairs involving the collider. Setting the active hooks colon filter underscore insertion underscore pair bit to one enables manual filtering all the contact pairs involving the collider. Setting the active hooks colon modify underscore solver underscore contacts bit to one enables manual contact modification. Each collider can be given user defined data of type 128. This integer can have a value and is never used slash modified by the physics engine. This can, for example, be useful to add some custom data for personalized contact filtering slash modification. This user data can be set when collider is created or after creation. Slash that user data when collider is created. Slash that collider equals collider builder colon ball most games involve bodies behaving in ways that defy the laws of physics. Floating platforms, elevators, playable characters, etc. This is why kinematic bodies exist. They offer a total control over the body's trajectory since they're completely immune to forces or impulses, like gravity, contacts, joints. But this control comes at a price. It is up to the user to take any obstacle into account by running custom collision detection operations manually and update the trajectory accordingly. This can be very difficult. Detecting obstacles usually rely on ray casting or shake casting. Used to adjust the trajectory based on potential contact normals. Often, multiple ray or shake casts are needed, and the trajectory adjustment code is straightforward. The kinematic character controller, which will abbreviate the character controller, is a higher level tool to learn the proper ray casting and shake casts to adjust the user to find trajectory based on obstacles. The well-known move and slide operation is the main feature of character controller. Despite its name, a character controller can also be used for moving objects that are not characters. For example, a character controller may be used to move a platform. In the rest of this guide, we will use the word character to designate whatever you like to move using the character controller. Radio provides a built-in general purpose character controller implementation. It allows you easily stop obstacles, slide on slopes that are not to see, climb stairs automatically, walk over small obstacles, interact with moving platforms. Despite the fact that this built-in character controller is designed to be generic enough to serve as a good starting point for many common use cases, character control, especially for the player's character itself, is often very game-specific. Therefore, the built-in character controller may not work perfectly out of the box for all game types. Don't hesitate to copy and customize it to fit your particular needs. Set up and use a cache. The character controller implementation is exposed to the character controller structure. This structure only contains information about the character controller's behavior. It does not contain any specific or rigid body specific information like handles, velocities, positions, etc. Therefore, the same instance of kinematic character controller can be used to control multiple rigid body slash colliders that rely on the same set of parameters. The kinematic character controller exposes only two methods. Move underscore shake is responsible for calculating possible movement of character based on desired movement, obstacles, and character control options. Solve underscore character underscore collision underscore impulses is detailed in collision section. Example 3D. Slash slash the translation. A player not attached to any rigid body. Set the collider's position directly to the correct movement to its current position. A velocity-based kinematic rigid body. Sets velocity to the computed movement divided by the time set length. A position-based kinematic rigid body. Sets next kinematic position to the correct movement to its current position. The character shape may be any shape supported by radio. However, it is recommended to either use a cuboid, a ball, or a capsule since they involve less computations and less numerical approximations. Warning: The built-in character controller does not support rotational movement. It only supports translations. Character offset hash. For performance and numerical stability reasons, the character controller will attempt to preserve a small gap between the character shape and the environment. This small gap is named offset and has a small margin around the character shape. A good value for this offset is something sufficiently small to make the gap unnoticeable, but sufficiently large to avoid numerical issues. If the character seems to get stuck inexplicably, try increasing the offset. Slash slash the character offset is set to 0.01. Character underscore controller offset equals character length colon absolute 0.01. Slash slash the character offset is set to up vector hash. The up vector instructs the character controller what direction should be considered vertical. The horizontal plane is the plane we're talking about this up vector. There are two equivalent ways to evaluate the slope of the floor by taking the angle between the floor and the horizontal plane in 2D, or by taking the angle between the up vector and the normal floor in 2D and 3D. By default, the up vector is positive y axis, but it can be modified to be any unit vector that suits the application. Slash slash set the up vector to positive x axis of character underscore controller equals vector colon x underscore axis. Copy. If sliding is enabled, the character can automatically climb slopes that are not too steep, or slide down slopes that are too steep. Sliding is configured by the following parameters. The max slope line angle. If the angle between the slope and the horizontal floor is larger than its value, then the character won't be able to slide up the slope. The min slope slide angle. If the angle between the slope and the horizontal floor is smaller than its value, then the vertical component of the character's movement won't result in any sliding. Info. As always in radio, angles are specified in radians. Slash slash don't allow climbing slopes larger than 45 degrees. Character underscore controller dot max underscore slope underscore climb underscore angle equals 45 dot zero dot. If enabled, the auto step setting allows
slash slash snap the ground to none to disable it. Character underscore control dot snap underscore one underscore ground equals none semicolon slash slash snap the ground to the vertical distance to the ground is smaller than zero dot five dot character underscore control dot snap. It is possible to let the character control ignore some obstacles. This is achieved by configuring the filter argument of the character controller to move underscore shape method. This query filter structure is detailed in the same query filter section. Warning: If the character controller is used to move a collider and the rigid body may be attached to that is present in the physics scene, the filters must be used to exclude the collider and the rigid body from the set of obstacles. With query filter colon exclude underscore collider and query filter colon exclude underscore rigid underscore body to prevent the character from colliding with itself. Collision hash as the character moves along the path, it will ground obstacles before sliding or stepping on them. No more collider is on this path, and where they take place can be valuable to apply various logic, custom forces, sound effects, etc. This is why a set of character collision events are collected during calculation of the trajectory. The character collision events are given in chronological order. For example, if during the resolution of the character motion, the character hits an obstacle A, then slides against it, and then hits another obstacle B, the collision with A will be reported first, and the collision with B will be reported second. Let character underscore control equals dynamic character control colon default. Slash slash. Unless dynamic bodies are filtered out by the character controller's filters, they may be hit during the resolution of the character movement. If that happens, these dynamic bodies will generally not react to, i.e., not be pushed by. The character because the character controller is also prevents actual contact from happening. In these situations, forces need to be applied manually to the rigid bodies. The character controller can apply these forces for you if needed. Let character underscore control equals dynamic character controller colon default. Slash slash. Gravity hash. Since you're responsible for providing the movement vector to the character controller each frame, it's up to you to emulate gravity by adding downward components to that movement vector.
at dim4 slash radio2d slash slash replace by the latest version number. Copy dependencies at dim4 slash radio. Radio is available as the at dim4 slash radio2d and at dim4 slash radio3d npm packages. You may have the following to your package.json. Example 2d, example 3d, dependencies, colon, at dim4 slash radio2d slash slash replace by the latest version number. Copy dependencies at dim4 slash radio3d slash slash replace by the latest version number. Copy because radio is actually a web assembly module. It has to be loaded asynchronously. The following shows a basic example with a dynamic rigid body falling on the ground. Example 3d. Import at dim4 slash radio2d. Then radio equals greater than slash slash use radio module here. Let gravity equals x 0.0 y minus 9.81. Let world equals new radio world gravity slash slash create the ground light ground flyer DSC equals radio flyer DSC dot cuboid 10.0 0.1 world dot create flyer ground flyer DSC slash slash create a dynamic rigid body. Let rigid body DSC equals radio rigid body DSC dot dynamic. Set translation 0.0 1.0. Let rigid body equals world dot create rigid body rigid body DSC slash slash create cuboid flyer. Attach the dynamic rigid body. Let flyer DSC equals radio flyer DSC dot cuboid 0.5 0.5. Let flyer equals world dot create flyer flyer DSC rigid body slash slash game loop. Replace by your own game loop system. Let game loop equals equals greater than slash slash sweep the simulation forward. World dot step slash slash and print rigid body position. Let position equals rigid body dot translation. Console dot log rigid body position. Position dot x position dot y. Set time dot game loop 16 semicolon game loop. Copy import at dim4 slash radio 3d. Then radio equals then slash slash use the radio module here. Let gravity equals x 0.0 y minus 9.81 z 0.0. Let world equals new radio world gravity slash slash create the round like round flyer DSC equals radio flyer DSC dot cuboid 10.0 0.1 10.0 world dot create flyer round flyer DSC slash slash create a dynamic rigid body. Let rigid body DSC equals radio rigid body DSC dot dynamic. Set translation 0.0 1.0 0.0. Let rigid body equals world dot create rigid body rigid body DSC slash slash create a cuboid flyer attached to the dynamic rigid body. Let flyer DSC equals radio flyer DSC dot cuboid 0.5 0.5 0.5. Let flyer equals world dot create flyer flyer DSC rigid body slash slash game loop. Replace by your own game loop system. Let game loop equals equals greater than slash slash sweep the simulation forward. World dot step slash slash get encrypted rigid body position. Let position equals rigid body dot translation. Console dot log rigid body position. Position dot x position dot y position dot z. Set time dot game loop 16 semicolon game loop. Copy. See the test bed 3D slash SRC slash demos and test bed 2D slash SRC slash demos folders for examples on how to initialize radio physics world using these bindings. Using radio without a bundle hash. If you are attempting to use radio without a bundle, or if you are using a bundle that doesn't support WASM files properly, the previous solution will be difficult to get working. The alternative is to use our compatibility UND packages at dim4 slash radio2d compatible at dim4 slash radio3d compatible. These packages embed the WASM file encoded in base64 into the main JS file. This results in a slightly different initialization process. Example 2D, example 3D, import radio from HTTPS colon slash slash cdn dot slash dot dev slash bodies. The real-time real simulation of rigid body subjective forces and contacts is the main feature of physics engine for video games, robotics, or animation. Rigid bodies are typically used to simulate dynamics of non-formal solids as well as the trajectory of solids which velocities are controlled by the user, for example, moving platforms. On the other hand, rigid bodies are not enough to simulate, for example, cars, ragdolls, or robotic systems, as those use cases require adding restrictions on relative motion between the parties using joints. Note that rigid bodies are only responsible for the dynamics and kinematics of the solid. Colliders can be attached to a rigid body to specify its shape and enable collision detection. A rigid body without collider attached will not be affected by contacts because there is no shape to compute contact against. Creation and insertion hash. A rigid body is created by a world created rigid body method. The initial state of the rigid body created is described by an instance of a rigid body DSC class. Each rigid body created by the physics world is given an indirect identifier rigid body handle. This identifier is guaranteed to differ from any identifier of rigid body still existing or that exists in the physics world. The following example shows several sizes can be called customized rigid body being built. The input values are just random, so using this example is not lead to a useful result. Example 2D, example 3D, slash slash the world will contain a rigid body that equals new radio world. X 0.0 Y minus 9.81 slash slash builder for fixed rigid body dot underscore equals rigid body DSC dot fix slash slash builder for dynamic rigid body dot underscore equals rigid body DSC dot dynamic slash slash builder for kinematic rigid body control at the velocity level dot underscore equals rigid body DSC dot kinematic velocity base slash slash builder for a kinematic rigid body control at the position level dot underscore equals rigid body DSC dot kinematic position base slash slash builder for a body with status specified by a new dot rigid body DSC equals new rigid body DSC radio rigid body type dot dynamic slash slash rigid body translation slash slash default zero vector that's translation zero point zero five point zero slash slash rigid body rotation slash slash default no rotation set rotation five point zero slash slash the linear velocity of this body slash slash default zero velocity that's at level one point zero two point zero slash slash the angular velocity of this body slash slash default zero velocity set angle two point zero slash slash the ceiling factor applied to gravity affecting the rigid body slash slash default one point zero set gravity scale zero point five slash slash whether or not this body can sleep slash slash default true set can sleep true slash slash whether or not CCD is enabled for this rigid body slash slash default false set CCD enabled false slash slash all done actually build a rigid body dot let rigid body equals world dot create rigid body rigid body DSC slash slash the integer handle rigid body can be read from handle field let rigid body handle equals rigid body dot handle copy slash slash the world will contain rigid body dot let world equals new radio world x zero point zero y minus nine point eight one z zero point zero slash slash builder for a fixed rigid body dot example one equals radio rigid body DSC dot fixed slash slash builder for dynamic rigid body dot example Typically, the inertia and center of mass are automatically set to the inertia and center of mass resulting from the shapes of the colliders attached to the rigid body. But they can also be set manually. Rigid body type hash. There are three types of rigid bodies. Identified by the rigid body type information. Rigid body type dynamic indicates that the body is affected by external forces and contacts. Rigid body type fixed indicates the body cannot move. It acts as if it has an infinite mass and will not be affected by any force. It will continue to collide with dynamic bodies, but not with fixed nor with kinematic bodies. This is typically used for the groundwork for temporary freezing body. Rigid body type kinematic position based indicates that the body position must not be altered by the physics engine. The user is free to set its next position and body velocity will be reduced to each update accordingly to ensure realistic behavior of dynamic bodies in contact with it. This is typically used for moving platforms, elevators, etc. Rigid body type kinematic velocity based indicates that the body velocity must not be altered by the physics engine. The user is free to set its velocity and next body position will be reduced to each update accordingly to ensure realistic behavior of dynamic bodies in contact with it. This is typically used for moving platforms, elevators, etc. Both position based and velocity based kinematic bodies are mostly the same. Choosing between both is mostly a matter of preference between position based control and velocity based control. The whole point of kinematic bodies is to let the user have full control of their trajectory. This means that kinematic bodies will simply ignoring contact force and go through walls and ground. In other words, if you tell the kinematic to go somewhere, it will go there. No questions asked. Taking obstacles into account needs to be done manually either by using sequences to detect nearby obstacles or by using the built-in character controller. Position hash. The position of a rigid body represents its location, translation, in 2D or 3D world space, as well as its orientation, rotation. The position of a rigid body can be set when created. It can also be set after its creation is illustrated below. Warning: Directly changing the position of a rigid body is equivalent to teleporting. This is not a physically realistic action. Teleporting dynamic or kinematic bodies may result in non-behaviors, especially the teleporting in space occupied by other objects. For dynamic bodies, forces, impulses, or velocity modification should be preferred. For kinematic bodies, see the discussion after the examples below. Example 2D, example 3D, slash that position when a rigid body is created. Slash let rigid body DSC equals radio rigid body DSC dot dynamic. Slash slash rigid body translation. Slash slash default zero vector. In order to move a dynamic rigid body, it is strongly discouraged to set position directly as it may result in weird behaviors. It is as if the rigid body teleports itself, which is a non-physical behavior. For dynamic bodies, it is recommended to either set its velocity or to apply forces or impulses. For velocity-based kinematic bodies, it is recommended to set its velocity instead of setting its position directly. For position-based kinematic bodies, it is recommended to use the special methods. Rigid body dot set next kinematic position. Rigid body dot set next kinematic rotation. Rigid body dot set next kinematic translation. These methods
Alternatively, the velocity of a dynamic rigid body can be altered directly by applying a force or impulse. Gravity hash. Gravity is such a common force that is implemented as a special case. Even if it could easily be implemented by the user using force application, the gravity is the constructor of the physics world. It can be modified by modifying the field world of gravity. No, however, the change of gravity won't automatically wake up a sleeping body, so keep in mind you may want to wake up manually before gravity change. Because fixed and kinematic bodies are immune to forces, they are not affected by gravity. Info: A rigid body with no mass will not be affected by gravity either. So if your rigid body doesn't fall, you expect it to. Make sure it has a mass explicitly, or at least one collider with non-zero density attached to it. It is possible to change the way gravity affects a specific rigid body by setting the rigid body's gravity scale to a value other than 1.0. The magnitude of the gravity applied to this body will be multiplied by the scaling factor. Therefore, a gravity scale set to 0.0 will stable gravity for the rigid body, whereas a gravity scale set to 2.0 will make it twice as strong. A negative value will flip the direction of gravity for this rigid body. This gravity scale factor can be set when the rigid body is created or after its creation. Slash set the gravity scale when the rigid body is created. Slash let rigid body DSE equals rate your rigid body DSE dot dynamic. Thus set gravity scale 2.0. Let rigid body equals world dot create rigid body rigid body D. In addition to gravity, it is possible to add custom forces or torques or applying forces or torque impulses to dynamic rigid bodies in order to make them move in specific ways. Forces affect rigid body acceleration, whereas impulses affect rigid body velocity. They are both based on familiar equations. Forces, the acceleration changes equal to the force divided by mass. Delta equals m. One f. Impulses, the velocity changes equal to the impulse divided by mass. Delta equals m. One i. Forces can be added, and impulses can be applied to a rigid body after it's been created. Added forces are persistent across simulation steps and can be cleared manually. Example 3D. Slash slash the true argument makes sure the rigid body is awake. Rigid body reset forces true. Slash slash reset the forces zero. Rigid body reset forces true. Slash slash reset the forces zero. Rigid body force x zero point zero. Y one thousand point zero. True. Rigid body at torque one hundred True. Rigid body at. Keep in mind that dynamic rigid body with zero mass won't be affected by linear force slash impulse, and a rigid body with zero angular inertia won't be affected by force slash torque impulses. So if your force doesn't appear to do anything, make sure that the rigid body is dynamic. It is strong enough to make the rigid body move. Try a very large value and see if it does something. The rigid body has a non-zero mass or angular inertia either because they were set explicitly, or because they were computed automatically from colliders with non-zero densities. Mass properties hash. The mass properties of a rigid body is composed of three parts. The mass which determines the resistance of the rigid body WRT. Linear movements. A high mass implies that larger forces are needed to make the rigid body translate. The angular inertia determines the resistance of the rigid body WRT. The angular movements. A high angular inertia implies that larger forces are needed to make the rigid body rotate. The center of mass determines relative to what points force are applied to the rigid body. Zero is a special value for masses and angular inertia. A mass equal to zero is interpreted as infinite mass. An angular inertia equal to zero is interpreted as infinite angular inertia. Therefore, a rigid body with a mass equal to zero will not be affected by any force, and a rigid body with an angular inertia equal to zero will not be affected by any torque. Computing mass and angular inertia can often be difficult because they depend on the geometric shape of the object being simulated. This is why they are automatically computed by radio when colliders attached to the rigid body. The collider has its own mass and angular inertia contribution. Computed based on the collider's shape density, to the rigid body is attached to. Let rigid body DSE equals rigid body DSE dot dynamic. Let rigid body equals world dot free rigid body rigid body DSE slash slash. Default density is one point zero. We are saying two point zero for this example. Let collider DSE equals collider DSE dot all one point zero. Set density two point zero slash slash when collider is attached. Alternatively, it is possible to set the mass properties of rigid body when it's created. Keep in mind this won't prevent the collider's contributions to be added to these values. So make sure to set the attached collider's density to zero if you want your explicit values to be final mass properties values. Example 2D. Example 3D. Slash set the mass properties when the rigid body is created. Slash let rigid body DSE equals rate your rigid body DSE dot dynamic. That's an additional mass 0.5. It is sometimes useful to prevent a rigid body from rotating or translating. One typical use case for locking rotations is to prevent a player model with a dynamic rigid body from tilting. These high degree of freedom restrictions can be achieved by joints, but locking translation slash rotations of a single rigid body WRT. The Cartesian coordinate axes can be done in a much more efficient and numerically stable way. That's why rigid bodies are dedicated methods for this. Example 3D. Slash lock translation slash rotations when the rigid body is created. Slash let rigid body DSE equals rate your rigid body DSE dot dynamic. Dot lock translation slash slash. Prevent translations along long axes. Lock rotations slash slash prevent rotations dot let rigid body equals world dot free rigid body rigid body DSE. Copy slash lock translation slash rotations after the rigid body creation. Slash the last true argument make sure the rigid body is awake dot rigid body dot lock translations true. True. Rigid body dot lock rotations true. True. Copy slash lock translation slash rotations when the rigid body is created. Slash let rigid body DSE equals rate your rigid body DSE dot dynamic. Dot lock translation slash slash prevent translations along long axes. Lock rotations slash slash prevent rotations along long axes. Dot set enable rotations true. False. False. Slash slash only enable rotations along the axis dot let rigid body equals world dot free rigid body rigid body DSE. Copy slash lock translation slash rotations after. hash. Damping lets you slow down a rigid body automatically. This can be used to achieve a wide variety of effects like fake air friction. Each rigid body is given a linear damping coefficient, affecting its linear velocity and an angular damping coefficient, affecting its angular velocity. Larger values of the damping coefficients lead to a stronger slowdowns. Their default values are 0, 0.0. No damping at all. This damping coefficient can be set when the rigid body is created or after its creation. Slash that damping coefficient when the rigid body is created. Slash that rigid body DSE equals rate your rigid. Dominance is non realistic, but sometimes useful. Feature. It can be used to make one rigid body immune to forces originating from contact with some other bodies. For example, this can be used to model a player represented as a dynamic rigid body that cannot be pushed back by any or some other dynamic rigid body part of the environment. Each rigid body is part of dominance group N minus 127. 127. The default group is zero. If the collider from two rigid bodies are in contact, the one with the highest dominance will act as it has infinite mass, making it immune to contact forces the other body will apply on it. If both bodies are part of the same dominance group, then their contact will work in the usual way. Both are affected by opposite forces with the same magnitude. For example, if a dynamic body A is in the dominance group 10 and a dynamic body B in the dominance group minus 20, their contact between the collider attached to A and the collider attached to B will result in a remaining mobile being pushed by A, independently from the mass. Info: A non-dynamic rigid body is always considered as being part of dominance group greater than any dynamic rigid body. This means the dynamic slash fixed and dynamic slash kinematic contact will continue to work normally, independently from the dominance group they were given by the user. The dominance group can be set when the rigid body is created or after its creation. Slash that damping coefficient when the rigid body is created. Slash that rigid body DSE equals rate your rigid body. Continuous collision detection hash. Continuous collision detection. CCD is used to make sure that fast moving objects don't miss any contacts. A problem usually called tunneling. This is done by using motion clamping, i.e., each fast moving rigid body with CCD enabled will be stopped at the time where the first contact happened, taking their continuous motion into account. This will result in some time loss for that rigid body. This loss of time can be reduced by increasing the maximum number of CCD subsets executed. The default being one in the integration parameters by changing the integration parameters of mass CCD subsets. Field radio implements non-linear CCD, meaning that it takes into account both the angular and translational motion of the rigid body. CCD takes action only if the CCD enabled rigid body is moving fast relative to another rigid body. Therefore, it is useless to enable CCD on fixed rigid bodies and rigid bodies that are expected to move slowly. By default, CCD is disabled for all rigid bodies because it requires additional computations. It can be enabled when creating a rigid body or after its creation. Slash enable CCD when rigid body is created. Slash let rigid body DSE equals rate your rigid body DSE dot dynamic. Dot set CCD enable true. Let rigid body equals world dot free rigid body rigid body DSE. Copy. Slash enable CCD after rigid body creation. Slash rigid body dot enable CCD true. Copy. Sleeping hash. When dynamic rigid body doesn't move or moves very slowly during a few seconds, it will be marked as sleeping by the physics pipeline. Rigid bodies marked as sleeping are no longer simulated by the physics engine until they are woken up. That way, the physics engine doesn't waste any computational resources simulating objects that don't actually move. They are woken up automatically whenever another non-sleeping rigid body starts interacting with them, either with a joint or with one of its attached liars generating contacts. However, a sleeping rigid body won't respond when user action. This is why it's possible to wake up the rigid body manually with the rigid body wake up. Some rigid body methods take an additional wake up boolean argument that, if true, ensures that the rigid body wakes up before the action takes place. For example, rigid body dot add force force. True, will wake up the rigid body before adding force. World dot remove joint joint. True, will wake up the two rigid bodies attached by remove joints.
There are two types of colliders. A solid collider represents a geometric shape that can have contact points with other colliders to generate contact forces to prevent objects from penetrating each other. Sensor colliders, on the other hand, don't generate contact. They only generate intersection events when one sensor collider and another collider starts stop touching. Sensor colliders are generally used to detect when something enters an area. By default, collider is a solid collider. This can be changed to a sensor when constructing a collider or after its construction. Slash that collider type when collider is created. Slash that collider DSC equals radio collider DSC dot zero point five. Set sensor true. Let overview hash. The main characteristic of colliders is geometric shape. The supported shapes are illustrated below. Shapes only hold information about their geometry. Their world space position is given by the collider's position. Balls, cuboids, capsules, cylinders, and cones are all described by the half height and radius. Compound shapes, convex meshes, triangle meshes, high fields, and polylines are more complicated shapes described in the next paragraphs. Convex meshes hash. A convex mesh is a shape such that if two points are part of the shape, then the segment between these two points is also part of the shape. There are two ways of creating a collider with a convex shape. Using collider DSC dot convex all points. This is the simplest approach. It will automatically compute the convex all given set of points. A convex all is the smallest convex shape that contains all given points. Using collider DSC dot convex mesh points. Indices in 3D or collider DSC dot convex following points in 2D. This takes a mesh described by its vertex buffer and index buffer and assumes is already convex. You need to ensure that it's convex yourself. This will be more efficient than collider DSC dot convex all constructed because it won't perform any calculations to ensure convexity. However, if the input mesh is actually convex, the collision detection for that shape will give an incorrect result. Triangle meshes and polylines hash. Triangle meshes in 3D and polylines in 2D can be used to describe the boundary of any kind of shape. This is generally useful to describe the fixed environment in games, terrains, buildings, etc. Triangle meshes and polylines are defined by the vertex buffer and index buffer. The winding of the triangles of triangle meshes does not matter. Its topology doesn't matter either. It can have holes, cavities, doesn't need to be closed or manifold. It is however strongly recommended to avoid triangles that are long and thin because they can result in a lower numerical stability of collision detection. A triangle mesh slash polyline is composed of triangle slash segments with no thickness. This means that geometric queries like point containment tests won't work intuitively because the triangle mesh is assumed to have no interior. A triangle mesh layer can be built with collider DSC dot triangle vertices. Indices, where vertices is the buffer containing all the vertices of the mesh, and indices is a set of indices indicating what vertex is used by what triangle. The vertex buffer and index buffer may have different lengths, and any vertex can be shared by multiple triangles. A polyline layer can be built with collider DSC dot polyline vertices. Indices, where vertices is the buffer containing all the vertices of the polyline, and indices is an optional set of indices indicating what vertex is used by what segment. The vertex buffer and index buffer may have different lengths, and any vertex can be shared by multiple segments. If a given vertex buffer is none, then the input vertices are assumed to form a line script, i.e., the polyline is formed from segments vertices zero, vertices one, vertices one, vertices two, etc. Warning: It is discouraged to use a triangle meshes or polyline for colliders attached to dynamic rigid bodies because they have no interior. It is easy for another object to get stuck in them. In order to simulate properly non-convex objects, it is recommended to use a convex decomposition with a compound shape instead. High field hash. High fields are a more restricted version of triangle meshes and polylines. However, they may be easier to find and use much less memory. Therefore, high fields are useful to define large parts of terrain with simple apologies. A 3D high field is basically a large rectangle in the XC plane, subdivided in a grid pattern of regular Each vertex of the subdivision is given a height, i.e., the coordinate of that point along the y-axis. A 3D high field collider can be created with collider DSC dot high field heights. Scale, where height is a matrix indicating the altitude of each subdivision point of the high field. The number of rows of that matrix is the number of subdivisions along the x-axis, and number of columns is the number of subdivisions along the z-axis. The scale argument indicates the size of the rectangle of the XC plane. A high field collider can be given any orientation by changing the orientation of the collider itself. A 2D high field is a large segment along the x-axis, subdivided regular intervals. Each vertex of the subdivision is given a height, i.e., the coordinate of that point along the y-axis. A 2D high field collider can be created with collider DSC dot high field heights. Scale, where height is a vector indicating the altitude of each subdivision point of the high field. The number of elements on that vector is the number of subdivisions of the high field. The scale argument indicates the length of the subdivided segment along the x-axis. Round shapes hash. Some shapes are round bearings, round cuboid, round cylinder, round cone, round convex polygon, and round convex polyhedron. These are shapes which add a small thickness with round border. For algorithmic reasons, collision detection involving round cylinders, round cones, round convex polygon, or round convex polyhedron will be faster than collision detection with their non-round counterparts. However, collision detection with round cuboids will be slower than collision detection with regular cuboids. Colliders with round shapes are built in a way very similar to their non-round counterparts. For example, collider DSC round cuboid. These constructors take one additional parameter: the size of the added thickness called border radius. Mass properties hash. The mass properties of a rigid body is computed as the sum of the mass properties manually set by the user for the rigid body plus the mass properties of the colliders attached to it. There are two ways to define mass properties of the collider: the easiest, automatic way, by giving the collider a non-zero density. The default density is 1.0 or a non-zero mass. This will make sure the other mass properties like the angular inertia tensor are computed automatically from the collider shape. The manual way, by giving explicit mass angular inertia to the collider, is recommended to use the density based or mass based approaches as it will ensure the automatically computed mass properties are coherent with the geometric shape. Wrong mass properties, especially the angular inertia part and center of mass location, may lead to odd behaviors. The manual approach is usually useful when modeling real world objects for which you already know the real world mass, center of mass, and angular inertia tensor. The mass properties of the collider can only be set when the collider is created. Example 3D, leverage body DSC equals radio rigid body DSC dot dynamic. Position hash. The position of the collider represents its location. Translation in 2D or 3D world space as well as its orientation. Rotation. A translational part is represented as a vector and its rotational part is a unit quaternion. In 3D or a unit complex number. In 2D. Both are combined into an isometry. A translational part is represented as a vector and its rotational part is a unit quaternion. In 3D or an angle. In 2D. Please read carefully the paragraph after the next example. It explains how the collider position and the action of setting this position behaves differently when it is attached to a rigid body. It is possible to set this position when the collider is created or after its creation. Example 2D. Example 3D. Slash set the collider position when the collider is created. Slash let collider DSC equals collider DSC dot zero point five. Set translation one point zero two point zero. Set rotation zero point four. Let collider equals world dot create collider collider DSC. Copy slash set the collider position after the collider creation. If a collider is attached to a rigid body, its position is automatically updated by the physics pipeline, or rigid body moved by the physics pipeline. If a change to the rigid body position is made by the user, then the collider position will be updated during that time step. Therefore, directly setting the position of the collider attached to a rigid body will have no lasting effect. Instead, it is possible to set the position of the collider relative to the rigid body it is attached to. Example 2D. Example 3D. Let rigid body DSC equals radio rigid body DSC dot dynamic. Let rigid body equals world dot create rigid body rigid body DSC. Let collider DSC equals radio collider DSC dot. The collider position WRT. The rigid body slash slash is automatically set to the collider. It's parent after the collider creation. The collider position WRT. The rigid body slash slash is automatically set to the collider current position when this method is called dot. Let collider equals world dot create collider DSC. Rigid body copy slash the collider position WRT. It's parent after the collider creation. Slash collider dot set translation WRT parent x one point zero y two point zero z three point zero copy friction is a force that opposes relative tangential motion between two rigid bodies with colliders in contact. This force has a direction of final to contact normal opposite the relative rigid body motion at contact point. Following the Coulomb friction model, the maximum magnitude of this force is the magnitude of the force along contact normal multiplied by friction coefficient. A friction coefficient of zero implies no friction at all. Completely sliding contact. And a coefficient greater or equal to one implies a very strong friction. Values greater than one are allowed. Note: radio does not make any distinction between the fixed and dynamic friction coefficients currently. Each collider has its own friction coefficient. This means that when two colliders are in contact, we need to apply a rule that combines the friction coefficients of these two colliders into a single coefficient that we use for contact. This rule is described by coefficient combined rule of noon. Coefficient combined rule of average. The average of two coefficients is used for contact. Coefficient combined rule of min. The minimum among the two coefficients is used for contact. Coefficient combined rule of multiply. The product of the two coefficients is used for contact. Coefficient combined rule of max. The maximum among the two coefficients is used for contact. By default, the average rule is used. Each collider can be given its own friction combined rule. When two colliders are in contact, we need to select one of their combined rule. The following precedence is used. Max greater than multiply greater than min greater than average. For example, if one collider with multiple friction combined rule is in contact with a collider with the average friction combined rule, then the multiple rule will be applied to the friction coefficient of this contact. I.e., the coefficient of both colliders will be multiplied to obtain the coefficient used by contact. The coefficient combined rule system
Collision groups and solver groups hash. The most efficient way of preventing some pairs of colliders from interacting with each other is to use collision groups or solver groups. Each collider is given. A collision underscore groups for filtering what pair of colliders should have contact or intersection test at least one of the colliders as a sensor. Computed by the narrow face. This filtering happens right after the broad face. At the beginning of the narrow face, a solver underscore groups for filtering what pair of colliders should have contact forces computed. This filtering happens at the end of the narrow face before the constraint solver. In other words, the solver underscore groups is here to prevent contact forces from being computed between some colliders, whereas the collision underscore groups will also prevent contact themselves and contact events from being computed. The collision underscore groups should be preferred most of the time because it skips more computations. The solver underscore groups is only useful if you really want the contact information to be computed, but not the forces. For example, so that you can apply your own forces based on these contacts. A collision group or solver group is described as a pair of bit mass. The group's membership indicates what groups the colliders part of. One bit per group. The group's filter indicates what groups the colliders interact with. One bit per group. The membership and filter are both 16 bit mass packed into a single 32 bit value. The 16 left most bits contain the membership, whereas the 16 right most bits contain the filter. For example, let's say we want to be part of the groups 0, 2, 3, and be able to interact with groups 2. Then its group's membership is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0
the motor spring-like equation. This should be used only if the other configuration methods are not flexible enough. In figure motor model model, this selects the mathematical model for the motor's controller. All the available models use a spring-like equation. See the API documentation of spring model for details. It is also possible to configure the maximum impulse applied by the motor. This limits the maximum force/torque the motor is able to deliver. The following examples show the configuration of the joint motor for a prismatic joint. Example 2D. Let x equals x 1.0 y 0.0. Let params equals rate your joint data prismatic. I was thinking about there that I didn't I didn't know that to use Wasm you have to do dynamic imports. So this is gonna be a nightmare. Because the problem is that I'm gonna obviously initialize the the stuff, the world and everything in this component, but then I'm gonna add the elements or uh, elements to the visualization the, on the other components. So obviously I think that is a bad, very bad um, 
thing to do to initialize uh, to import in both components that, that's not doesn't sound very good so the solution that I was thinking about is just like I'm obviously gonna create the class or function so inside of the function I import the stuff or just import here and then I pass uh, to the function but it, it opens up a bunch of different possibilities in my mind which makes it uh, more confusing because the other stuff we can do is just do the, the dynamic imports on, on the top here and I guess I have to maybe try it out a bunch of them but it's going to be more challenging because of that So I think I'm gonna put some music for myself and just go and nice step through the thing. Then I'll think about this later. It's kind of like a difficult thing. It's something that I struggle uh, all the time because, like, part of me feels like I should start trying to do things as fast as possible, but then. I think that it really matters to decide like what direction to go because it's going to impact everything else. So I'm really not sure if I just should like create a file here and then start trying to do stuff or if I should like spend more time thinking about like the whole system that I'm trying to build and how everything is going to be impacted in the long term by the decision I make here of uh, which direction should go? Because obviously I don't have experience as well building the physics engine and moving the canvas, so I don't know the best way to go about it. And I think because it requires this async import, I'm probably going to be forced to choose a class because it makes more sense. Like you create the instance of the class here, and then through that that instance you pass the app view by using the context here. And then inside of the class, you set up the event listeners on, on the construction parts and you import the wrapper stuff. And then I can create a data structure that keeps track of all the nodes and the edges inside of the, the thing. And like do some functions that's inside of the components when I call the functions, they are gonna uh, initialize the stuff inside of the main class that was created in the road here I just pass the the data for the, creating the nodes to that function then inside of the function I use the wrapper to create the objects because the function is going to have access to the but then there's a bunch of different questions like about the use effect I was gonna work with the life cycle of react as well And how do I update the the engine? Because like if I do the class, then I guess I can. Yeah, but how? I I can access components from the class. I think components are attributes, and then I can update through the the hook here, the same way that is doing here. It's probably it's not gonna be. I think that. Functional components, like functional, uh, using functions might be better, but I don't think there's a way to escape using the class. It, it might make more sense to use the class. Yeah, so I think I'm just going to stop. I, I'll think about this. It's going to take some time to think about it, I think, because or maybe I should just uh, start doing stuff and see what happens. That's the other alternative. I'm going to stop then as I step through this stuff, I'll think about that.
I pressed the wrong thing there. I meant to press press F down, but I'm gonna try to go faster now. Fuck. Shouldn't press F10 there. I do I just forget about it and I think I'm gonna go over again. Or maybe it's better to click instead of pressing the the thing. Last chance of making a mistake.
Can you just stop here? My headphone is annoying me. And this is kind of boring anyway, so I'm gonna continue to do this off stream. And I wanna understand more how it works before I try to do it, I think. But maybe I change my mind and I start trying to do it because I don't really know. It's very challenging to think about what is the best way to go about it. If I should just try, start trying to do things or if I should try to understand more first. The idea that I have in my mind now is that I'm gonna probably create a class, either a class or a function inside of here, and then I'm gonna pass the app view to the function or class. And inside of the function or class, I'm gonna import the, I'm gonna try to import the rapier. But I think you might, uh, I might have uh, several challenges because it's gonna be async, so I'm gonna might have to import here. But if that's the case, then I can just pass the rapier to the function or class in the beginning. And then I make uh, an instance of that instead of the class or function. And then on the other components, I, I can create a f a functions instead of class or function on the view. So that on the other components, I can call the, that function and pass the data structure for the nodes and the the edges, and then inside of the, the function, I can function or class, I can use the rapier to do the calculations. But I, I need to understand how the viewport does it first. And also you need to understand more how the app works, how it builds the view in the first place, and then how the viewport's gonna interact with the view. And then once I have a decent idea, I can just copy the functions and I try to keep it as simple, simple as possible. And then I can merge. Then I can think that after I implement the zoom and the drag on my own, then I, I think I can start trying to use the rapier for handling the physics. And then I'm gonna have to see how, like how I'm gonna have to change. But I think at that point it's probably like, because it's gonna be built in the class. Every time I change the the view, the zoom, uh, on the zoom event, I'm gonna change the properties on the class or function. And on the drag, it's gonna be the same thing. And then because the physics engine is gonna be using the same stuff that the class has, I think it, it will automatically update. So I think that it might be easier than I'm thinking, but the hard part is gonna be understand everything and also decide which way to go about it. That's gonna be very annoying, so. And like, it's very challenging, but I, I don't think I can like, I'll think about if I can break down into smaller steps so I can, because it's very, I think it, like the, the challenge is higher than the level of skill. So it's very hard to, it's not in the, in the perfect balance, let's say. It would be better if I could break down into smaller tasks so I can start uh, doing. But I, I can't think about a good way to do that now. So I'm probably gonna just step through this a bunch of times. I'm gonna do the same stuff that I did with the React source code. So I'm just gonna take a bunch of time and really try to understand everything. And then once I get to that point, then I can start building stuff. So I'm probably not gonna stream very often, I think, during this time. Until I understand this, uh, uh, but I'm probably gonna come back very soon, I think, so.